Uh, right, so um, I've opened Logic and uh, I have a software instrument track with Analog Lab installed. This is what Analog Lab V looks like. Obviously, it's very similar to the new intro. Um, it basically just has a lot more presets. There's not really a huge amount of other features that the intro doesn't have. But that's it. This just comes with, with thousands and thousands more presets and uh, I've downloaded a few new sound banks if you go into the store you can actually find free sound banks so ambient uh, soundscapes is a new one iconic variation GSPA and percussive drive and M Huel signature are kind of new ones I've had obviously dark ambient and Hanson house and signature one before so that's quite a good tip like I said once you get it you can you can download these as well um, the ambient soundscapes is quite nice. I'll maybe kind of demo some of this later. So anyway, the first thing you need to do um, is obviously set up Logic. And this is just purely for Logic owners because it is not entirely obvious um, how to actually get this um, set up as a controller. So I'll go to uh, Control some Surfaces and Setup. And we'll move this over here so that you can see it. Um, so I am using the Mackie Control um, so if we click on that, uh, you'll see the output and input are set to uh, Keylab Essential 49.in and out. So how to actually get this is you go to um, install. And then in this whole list, like I said, you can see there are Arturia ones. You don't use any of the Arturia ones with Logic because it just won't work properly. So what you do is you scroll down to um, the Mackie ones. So the one that you want is the Mackie Designs, Mackie Control, Logic Control. And then you just add that. Um, and, and then once you've added that, you just change those two um, to in and out. Uh, and that is you. And you can see these ones obviously aren't connected because they've got little um, orange dots there. And that's it. And that should be fine. That's all you need to do. Uh, Analog uh, Lab. So uh, as far as the interface is concerned, like I said, it is kind of the same as the um the cut down ones so you've got all the different uh, types here so you can uh go by base um and then the other thing is if you've favorited any um presets from the earlier versions either light or intro they will still be here in your favorites so if you click on favorites i can see all my base favorites uh there home you can go keys you've got leads pads um uh, piano, electric piano, organ, strings, brass and winds, drums, sequence, vocal and sound effects. Um, and then that said, you've got all the different instruments. So if we show all, so these are all the individual instruments that you can uh, just see those particular presets rather than going by. So like, you know, bass, strings, whatever. Um, so that's quite good because obviously a lot of the time I'm looking for specific sounds. So like maybe the CS80 sounds. So you can search by designer, uh, type, name, whatever you want. And then you've got all the, the other controls up there. So you can click back. You can either go to styles, banks, designers, uh, user, which are mine. Um, and then you just, so that's all the ones for the CS80. Um, and then you can click that off and then we can go back to home. And then we can see all the other. So there's some quite new ones. This augmented strings and augmented voices is new. Um, I can't remember what other the uh you've got things like the dx7 like i said the cs80 the clavinet the b3 emulator 2 the matrix 12 is pretty cool the uh, korg M ms20 jupiter 8 jupiter 6 the uh, opx8a pianos pigments uh, and i think there's been an update to some of the pigments presets uh profit uh, the stage 73 the uh sq80 the selena the sem sem the Prophet version 5, the Prophet 5, uh, the vocoder and the Whirly. And then, like I said, you've got your sound banks and then all your designers. So uh, uh, Jean-Michel uh, Blanchet is one of my favourites. So his stuff is normally pretty good. Um, I would say he kind of does a lot of my kind of style of stuff. So like I said, there's loads of ways. So uh, And then you can just clear all uh, from that. And uh, like I said, you can go to either Explore or Home. Uh, so if you go to explore, you can uh, view by type, instrument, styles, banks, designers, and user. 
so I have now 31 presets. So I've been working on some new presets for this, uh, and I have a pack of 20 um, that are free to download on the website. So I'm going to I'm going to work. I'm going to get this up to 40, and then I will um, upload it again to the to the uh, store. Uh, and that will be a free download. And they're all uh, multi-samples, which means that they have two instruments uh, making up the sound. So we could have a look at maybe some of the um, the new ones later on. I'll load in my user bank and I'll load in some of the new... Let's have a look at this. So this is using the new um, uh, augmented strings. Um, so we'll see what this sounds like. And it is, I have to say, it is quite quiet. I've had to ramp up my volume quite a bit. So this is a beautiful universe, which is a string pad. Um, so everything is mapped, so every preset is, is already mapped, so I can control the brightness. So you have the amount and then the volume. And then you've got timber on this one, you've got time movement, uh, so we can bump up the movement. And let's say these are always different uh, depending on the preset. Said they are all pre mapped, so this is one of the reasons to get um, an Arturia keyboard because using this with a normal mini keyboard and having to map everything is a bit of a pain. Um, and the other thing you can do is when you've got two layers, um, you can actually adjust the, um, the uh, position of these within the keyboard, so you can take this down to like C3, <coughs> C4. Uh, C2, whatever you want, uh, and they are both uh, individually um, adjustable. And you can see if you click on this one, uh, you can see that's um, that's the controls for part one, and that's the controls for part two. Um, and most of my, most of the stuff that I kind of do or my presets are all kind of multis because I kind of quite like having that way of working. Um, so there's some new ones that are quite um, there's cinematic sweep, and you can see. This keyboard is split. So uh, part one is um, just playing from C3 and um, and the CinemaScope preset is playing um, both the, um, the lower keys and the upper keys. So you've got your um, your mod wheel and your pitch bend. The pitch bend is really springy, so like it's the minute you let go, it springs back, and it's really tight. Whereas the mod wheel is as light as a feather, so they could have maybe had these both more similar. But you barely have to touch the mod wheel, and it's off. Uh, and this thing's like a you know you've really got to push it. And then it'll automatically spring back. So it's it's got a bit of a, and plus they're very very uh, thin as well. So yeah, so that is the controls. Like I said, they're all they're all pre-mapped. Um, so we could change, for instance, some of the other, um, for instance, the envelope decay. We could put that up. So what's another new one? Uh, Dark Knight Falling. So you can see I've been using some of the new...
And like I said, there's loads and loads. So they're, they're all, like I said, they're all a bit of a mixture. They're not my usual kind of all kind of like soundscape. So Forgotten World. Uh, so you can see it's made up of Enter the Void and Forgotten Valley, which are both pigments. Um, so yeah, so that's um, that's how it kind of sounds. And we could go to pads and take my usual ones off, and then go to my favourites. So my favourites are on. So we could get some of. Uh, uh, fact, let's go to Jean Michel. Right, we'll go to Jean Michel's and we'll see what favourites I've got of his. So uh, addictive pad. Let's have a look. <laughs> So you can see some of his are multis and change that maybe why he's got the delay switched off we've got the brightness uh, so let's try a few uh, classic synth pad Um, so you can actually either um, use this scroll wheel, um, but if you use the scroll wheel, you then have to um, punch it in. Whereas if you use the, the um, forward back buttons, it will automatically load. So I tend to just use um, use these and it will come up with the name. So it's an ARP uh, 2600 and it's AMP, AMP Soft. So it will tell you on the screen what you're... Um, and this does have a standalone app, so you don't actually have to use this within a DAW unless you're going to be um, recording. Um, so you can just open the, the standalone um, Analog Lab app and you can play around with it there um, as well. Um, and the other thing is, um, which is, I haven't really talked about, is so we're in map. So map select is one is Analog Lab and two is DAW preset. So these are now going to adjust um, you see the volume control um, for that uh, track and then the master stereo output is is that one. These now um, control the pan. So if you see on the screen, um, that's pan and left, pan and right. Um, and that, that's it. So they are pre-mapped to that. I mean, obviously you can change them to do other things via MIDI Learn, but they're all pre-mapped. Um, and like I said, this has worked straight out the box without me faffing about with anything. Um, and it will give you uh, a note there. So on screen, it'll say uh, track one and it'll give you volume is 72. Um, and then we'll go up to, uh, so normally it would be about 97, 98, uh, so about 100 um, is what I normally, uh, on this one, because like I said, it is, for some reason, it's very quiet, uh, which is a bit weird. So yeah, so that is a kind of um, overview of how to get um, your Keylab Essential up and running with uh, Logic in particular and how to uh, use it within Analog Lab V. Uh, and there are a few uh, settings you can uh, obviously save presets uh, as and you they will automatically go into your user section and then you can export preset or e export bank uh, and then there's tutorials. The other thing is you can resize the window. So uh, I'm at 80% so uh, so so it fits in with this particular 16.9 format but you can go up to 100 uh, whatever you want 
uh, back down to smaller or larger, but like I said, 80%, 80-90% is normally about right for cordon. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, I'll be doing some other videos. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the best instruments and uh, let you hear what they sound like. Um, anyway, so that is it for today. Um, this has probably gone on way longer than it should have. Um, so as usual, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.